Okay. Well, for those of you tuning in, we got something a little special here today. This is a game that you've probably never heard of or seen for some bizarre reason, and it's called Gundam Operation Troy. Literally, I would call it the love child of Battlefield 2 meets Gundam, essentially. And joining me again today is our good friend Redshirt. He joined us on Rise from the Ashes, and he's going to be joining us in on this, too, since so few people got to see this game. This game is so obscure, even I know very little about it. I mean, I've read of some backstory on it a few times, but that was a long time ago. This game was only released in Japan on the Xbox 360. And for those unaware, the Xbox 360 wasn't exactly a huge hit in Japan. So, yeah, didn't exactly go over well. And while the game was well received, practically nobody played it. Yep. Supposedly it was going to be localized, but... Thanks to Gundam Crossfire literally bombing and crashing and burning horribly, that was the cam the little push that essentially broke the camel's back and made them pull out of uh, America with most Gundam properties, including this game, apparently. So, so we you... didn't get any Gundam games for years. Yeah, besides the Dynasty Warriors games and nothing else. So... They decided to kind of give the finger to their biggest audience that would have liked this game and completely destroyed its chances of succeeding over here. I, it had a very small community from what I know, but the community that played it really enjoyed it. It's, again, as I stated, like Battlefield meets Gundam. We've got infantry combat, we've got vehicle combat, and we've got mobile suit combat, as you can see here. And... While it was completely intended as a multiplayer game, I don't exactly have Xbox Live. I don't know if I could get it on this thing and even play it. If I did, it'd have to be a screwy setup just to find out that there's probably nobody on here. So, in the very least, what we can do is try out the single player campaign, which is going to feature just a little bit of everything. It's not very long, but hey, we'll work with it and see what we've got to offer. And the other reason I want to show you all this is because think about if they tried something like this today. No, not Operation Battle Operation 2. I'm talking an actual game like this today. Just let that sink in for a moment because we don't have first person combat in uh, Battle Operation. We don't have the scale of the maps and battles in that game. We don't exactly get to really try vehicle combat in that game either. We don't exactly have conquest mode or anything like this. I don't want to disrespect Battle Operation, but I call it very watered down compared to a, you know, something like even this that came out in, I think, 2006. So? I believe it was around 2006. Yeah. And, well, I mean, it's a Battle Operation credit. It's a free to play game. So, it, you get pretty much what you pay for, question mark. Yeah. And, what'd you pay for with Battle Operation 2? Well, again, I enjoy the game, but I think this is a taste of, you know, let's get something like this today. Let's see what it has to offer. And unfortunately, it's all Japanese, so can't really speak on to what the backstory is, but, you know, we'll wing it, alright? All we know is that it's set during the One Year War, during the titular Operation Troy, of which I don't even really recall what that one's about. Again, I, this is one of the few events of the One Year War that I have very little information about, so this is going to be a treat for both of us. Yep. I'm definitely going to have to do some more research on the game once this is all over. Because if I'm correct, you're going to be doing a review on this, aren't you? Yeah. At least as close to a review as I can. And, uh... Oh! Uh, hey there. <laughs> I'm Nick Cage. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, trust me, uh... We definitely would play a Battlefield game with giant robots in it. 
The only thing that you can get right now is Titanfall 2, MechWarrior 5, or, again, Battle Operation 2. That's pretty much our only yeah. choices here in today. And none of those, like, none of those are Gundam related. Like, a Gundam combat game with something akin to Titanfall, even if it's just a watered-down version of Titanfall, would still be really awesome. We never really get anything like this where you could dismount the mobile suits and engage in ground combat, like actual ground combat, and have to fly around shooting really nearly battle operations yep because in battle operations it is so bare bones it it almost may as well not be there honestly yeah <clears throat> this is also going to be coming from a time where there was no standardized you know controls or anything for a first person shooter in 2006 think about it what was the game that kind of modernized our first person shooter controls it was Call of Duty Modern Warfare, to be honest. And prior to that, you had some really strange things in games. Whether people wanted to acknowledge it or not. I mean, in 2006, golly, that's, that's probably even before the Modern Warfare came to the street. So, you're probably looking at, like, Halo 2 as the pinnacle of, oh, this is what the future of first-person shooters is going to be like. Yeah. Because uh, Half-Life... When did Half-Life 2 come out? But I digress. That's still pushing really far, right? like really early into the first-person shooter game genre. Before it really became mainstream by Call of Duty. Yep. Even though Call of Duty is definitely not my favorite series, there's no denying that they do put out a lot of great games, at least to a lot of people, and I've enjoyed a lot of the campaigns. And they did a lot for the the gaming genre, or the first-person shooter genre. I know that this is probably yeah, going to look pretty bare-bones, but for the time, this is probably yeah, pretty yeah. decent. Yeah, it was released in Japan, and while it, again, it did fairly well as far as gameplay-wise, was ahead of its time, the fact that it released on the Xbox 360 was such a strange choice. And the only thing I could think of was they were hoping they would boost sales of the Xbox 360. But it didn't. It, it really didn't. Even for Gundam games, they weren't really going to fly off the shelves together. Pretty much. Another weird thing about this game, just from the little I did try out, was it didn't have, you know, any recharging health, which that's not exactly anything new, but you had to constantly go back to these little boxes stationed around the map just to, you know, heal yourself constantly, and it seemed like it was something that could be easily abused. I mean, I could just sit here all day between these boxes, pretty much taking a beating. Essentially, just exploiting the repairs that you can get. Yeah, and it's actually really fast for even a mobile suit to get repaired. Wow. Yeah, so it's a little bit of a head-scratcher. Well, uh, the cage. I I would actually say Titanfall 2 is doing pretty good. It sounds like when Apex did that update, it gave it a huge, you know, burst of life on there. And it's always had a very loyal community on that game. I've Plus used... with the added uh, free-to-play weekend, and just the sales that they've been having on Steam, kind of revitalized interest in the franchise again. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I guess Strange Controls is a... A surprise either considering I have friends who will play Call of Duty with both the axis is inverted and max sensitivity so I'm apparently the strange one out of everyone because I play with low sensitivity you're not doing those twitch reflexes at all yeah I, I really can't do that Titanfall is literally the only game where I've been able to pull off twitch reflexes would you look at that you there goes try. a Zaku <laughs> 
You gotta flick the controller and have your character just do a 360. Yeah, no 360 no scope for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> and you call yourself a gamer. I know, I'm a terrible person. Well, actually, I, I take that back. Maybe Doom also helped a little bit. Well, Doom definitely works for that kind of play style. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Cage, actually, it, they, I mean, they're not making new updates for it, but the community is still holding up strong. I think they said, uh, when they did the free weekend and the Apex update dropped, it had 16,000 16, players come to it. It hit its highest peak ever. Only, like, a week or two ago. Yeah, it's been crazy just how many people have been joining into the game as new players. Yep. It's one of those things that's like, hey, you know, I hope EA seeing all this, because they already had to make new servers for Star Wars Battlefront 2 just because so many new players were joining in. A game that they already, quote, stopped developing for. So, there might be hope for Titanfall, because Titanfall sure as beats the heck out of Battlefront. Yeah. And, I mean, Battlefront's also hit its own redemption in recent times. It's finally in the good state where it should have been, I would say. But Yeah, yeah it's I, finally better. If I had to choose, I would pick Titanfall 2 over Battlefront any day, quite honest. And... Admittedly, there's even some things about the first Battlefront that EA did I like more than then the second one. There's quite a few things that are like plus and minus for both of them. Their first one did better and the second one did better. I definitely like the weapon variety and being able to choose and customize the gun first. But I understand the need for a classic for the second. It just doesn't feel the same. Though. Yeah, it really doesn't. I've had fun when we return to it, but it's just eh. That is very big for a Magella tank. Magella tanks are actually surprisingly large for their size. That makes no sense what I just said, but anyway. They are surprisingly large. They were the main battle tank of Zeon, and they were meant to accompany the, uh, the Zaku in the combat. Yeah. Scale-wise, the, the Type 97 tanks are actually rather small, but that was just because the Earth Federation is mostly geared towards space combat at the time, so their terrestrial forces sort of saw a little bit of stagnation. Which is why they still had older model jet propulsion aircraft fighting mobile suits. It didn't didn't pan out so well. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, as you can also tell I'm having to kind of progress a bit slowly with this, but if I I have to be very careful about how I pr proceed and fight at long range. It, as if you look closely, if I get just a little too close, you can see my health bar rapidly dropping. It seems like five bullets will kill me, and the only oh, way wow. I can heal is you know go back to a these boxes. So it's kind of a sketchy system, but I mean for a game where you're probably intended to be in mobile suits more than anything, this is just kind of. It is what it is. For the period oh. of the year it came from, I'm not surprised that this is what it's like. Definitely a relic of its time, but it seems to be working at the most part. A yeah. little wide open, devoid, but the, the main focus is supposed to be the mobile suit combat. Yeah, and that's what the maps are really designed around, is something of that scale. I find it fascinating that, despite being a Japanese game with Japanese language, that a lot of the menus and systems are in English. 
a lot of the Gundam games I've imported are like that. Um, Breaker 1 and 2 have a lot of English options just in the general gameplay and then certain menus. Uh, the Battle... Wait a minute, what am I talking about? Not Battle Assault. Um, you see Battle Record game does as well, and so does uh, Extreme vs. Full Boost. Really, a lot of Japanese games just include random English title options. It's kind of strange. Well, I mean, there are a lot of people who can speak and read English in Japan, but it's just so strange that for a native Japanese game, that they would have so many English options when yeah. this was not meant for export. This was clearly a game that was supposed to be here. Yeah. I mean... Oh, crap. Sorry, I know my aim looks horrible. It is just really weird how sluggish this thing is. <laughs> and, uh... Ground <laughs> combat's very rudimentary, to say the least. Just Cage, that is a tank of the Imperium of Man at that size. <laughs> but, uh, sorry, what were you saying, Red Shirt? I'm just saying is that it's very rudimentary, but, like, for the time, it was definitely something different. Yeah. If I played this back in 2006, man, I would have been hooked. I definitely would have been deep into this game. Because I think the first real shooter I actually got into during that era was Bad Company 1, and that's not the one that I really started getting into multiplayer with. Alright, Cage, you have fun over there, and have a good night. Yep, yeah, thanks for joining us. We'll see you later, dude. I can't tell if when I shoot the cars enough they just blow up. Or if that's just kind of naturally... You know, explosions are just going off in general. Just look at something. It's blown. Essentially. You think that these uniforms are accurate for both sides? Because they do look a bit, like, modernized, I noticed. Like... The uniforms used in the, uh, game set during the One Year War seem to vary back and forth. Like, these definitely look like they're a little modernized compared to the ones featured in most kinds of media, but the outfit itself does look accurate to the time period. Like, everything from the colors, the helmet, the actual uniform itself. It's just the outer gear is different because the gear that is most used by Federation soldiers represents it is uh that's what put it. It's definitely based off of the Alice carry system from the Vietnam War. But if you look at some of the artwork, it also looks like it's reminiscent of the standard load bearing vest from the, from the end of World War II through the Korean War. Yeah. And then you look at more recent ones, like Gundam the Origin, and they're wearing full-on full combat vests. So, it, usually it all depends on which developer is making it based off of what conflict. The very first Gundam had a lot of like allegories to World War II, so that's why the combat looked like that. But then you look at some of the AMS team, which is based off of the Vietnam War, and you those kind of references in the comic here. And then Gundam Origin is definitely in a post-9-11 world, so all the gear is more reference to modern military forces like the JSDF. In yeah. fact, the body armor used in Origin is very similar to the body armor used by the Japanese Special Defense Force. So there's no coincidence there. Well, that makes sense. I'm just kind of noticing that, yeah, as the years go on, they're they're slowly becoming more modern. It's kind of weird seeing in uh, Battle Operation 2 how they have, like, 
just straight up modern military gear, but then you look and you see the standard Federation uniform and Xeon uniforms, and then all the normal suits that have kind of just changed their looks throughout the years. You you can always yeah, tell when something is period specific in the Gundam universe. Yeah, and it can be a little jarring to see some of the dark really used to that kind of like variation style changes. Yeah. Like the consistency between the Federation uniform has been brought up a couple times with uh, with other Gundam fans that trying to pinpoint the exact references of this and that. Maybe I should have put this on easy. <laughs> It's taking longer than difficulty I expected. Are your, the difficulty is you put it on. Normal. But, yeah, just having to play it this slow in the- Oh my god, that almost killed me. Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> Talk about timing. Oh my good. Uh, alright, 15 minutes for that mission. Fair enough. Well, since we can't read this, I guess we'll just skip. I kind of wonder if I should, you know, get one of those apps on my phone that just auto translates, but I don't know how reliable they are. Or if I mean, maybe there is, like, I know that Google Translate does have a feature where you can scan in real time with your phone, but its translation service more or less hit or miss. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm worried about. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it works fine. Other times it's like, what? It, it just generates the literal phrase, and that's not always what you're looking for. Exactly. Oh, and there on the screen it was showing you, like, the re various repair points. And apparently there are multiple classes in this game. There's an anti-MS class where they run around with the anti-MS rockets and stuff. Uh, there's a specifically like anti-infantry teams and then I think the last class is like engineering or a sniper unit. Hmm. Oh, crap. Oh god, look at those frames, Chug. You can see that oh, Zaku. boy. That Zaku in the very back trying to fire at us. Now, if a Zaku shoots you, is that like an instant freaking kill? I mean, if the tank kills me in one hit, then that thing's gotta kill me in one hit. I can't imagine that being... Yeah, because... Because <laughs> that's like a 100mm shell firing at you. That's gotta hurt. Yeah, that's gotta be death. Okay, I honestly might change it to easy mode, just so we don't have to spend so much time on some of this. Because I'm having to play it so slowly and methodically. Kind of amused that they also did the Call of Duty thing of uh, labeling each soldier on my team. Yeah. I always like that feature in for do the labels that gives yeah. a little bit of immersion. I think that's probably one of my favorite features from Call of Duty Black Ops is that it populates the the soldiers as bots from your friends list. It's really cool. Yeah. Does a good job of it, at least adding like an extra layer of humanizing them or something, or making them, you know. I don't know, feel like there's more character and we're just more behind them. Even if it may not seem yeah. much. Uh huh. I think that's really cool. Yeah. This might seem kind of dumb, but I was always really upset when I let my AI teammates die in any game. Even in Halo, all my friends would always just love killing the Marines, but I was always like, No, I'm going through this mission without a single casualty. I'm making sure they all come with me, and if they died, I'd restart the checkpoint. <laughs> no man left behind. Exactly. I don't know why I felt so bad for him, but I just did. I'm like, I can't have him die. <laughs> Even though, like in Halo, you know most of them on that ring died. <laughs> Yeah, 
I just, like, I feel the same way. I don't like seeing my AI die. I will put myself in harm's way to protect them. Yes. That was also me in Ghost Recon and, uh, like, old Ghost Recon and not to mention Rainbow Six as well since they also kind of did that. Okay, I have got to go back to heal. The Part of the problem is I only have five mags, so when I go through them all, yeah, that's, uh, uh, it's a bit of an issue. It's like, oh no, I appear to have run out of bullets. I require more bullets. I kind of want to shoot. And I need to shoot to survive. Also just worried because if I, I can't take like 15 minutes per mission, because then this would extend well past two hours. Like if uh, I really get yeah. the Federation side. There was a sniper in my face. Oh dear. Oh god, that's a Magella. The funny thing is to uh, I guess the Magellas have to be so big just because they break off and fly around. It's really weirdly designed, but considering that they all come from space, uh, I guess it shouldn't be a surprise. Oh no, I'm getting some weird uh, delay and lag. Oh no. Is it, uh. Yeah, it was, I think it was just the internet picking up. That might be it then. Yeah, because it was mostly from my end. I gotcha. We'll keep on trucking. I don't think I even got anywhere near hitting. Oh, are you kidding me? There was a ammo crate up here. I'd rely on the grenade launcher more if it uh, had a better blast radius. I'm not really sure what they intended this thing to be used for because its blast oh. radius is almost direct hit only. Oh, I hope the stream didn't just freeze on me. Uh oh. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Oh dear, I hear robotic tones. I'm supposed to be the robot. Ah, <laughs> uh, what happened? That's not good. Oh my god, is that a Zaku I could steal? I think it is. Oh, are you kidding me? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. It's so easy to die on here. You literally cannot make a... like a frontal assault. Or just run out on them. I have to play it just by peeking corners and stuff, so I... I'm gonna lower it down to easy after this. Yeah. Just both for the sake of time and just... I guess enjoyment.
Goodbye. Call that payback. There's one. Let's get the other guy over here. I'm gonna very carefully just tap fire. So I want to use up as little ammo as possible and. Uh oh. Are you back? I think so. Fingers Neck crossed. Got all weirded out there. Can yeah. you hear me? I can hear you. Oh. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I hope I capture this. Um. How do I enter? What? What? What hit you? Oh, uh, my guess is a Magella or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to enter a mobile suit. I don't see you can control prompt for it, but I know. I, for, oh, you gotta be kidding me! I know for a fact I can steal the. Uh... uh steal other the suits. Suit. Yeah. Holy crap, I'm getting lit up. Help if I had cover. I might need the controls looked up for me, to be quite honest. I can try and do that. Let me see if I can. Yeah, just look up what the button for entering a mobile suit is, I guess. I'm sure this counts as technical difficulties are just... Whoops, we forgot to look up that control. Kind of important. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go back and reload, because I think I'm going to need the uh, extra frags, just in case there is a Magella out there. Oh! Well, I found the sprint button, finally. That would have been nice to know sooner. I don't see a tank out there. Oh, there's only videos. Alright. Wow, this video is 10 years old. Oh my goodness. Sounds about right. That's interesting. Oh! Just saying how you play I uh, found it out on accident. Oh! Hooray! Um, That's so Zeke stuff. Yeah. Alright. 
I like the feel of this, and I like that this is clearly a Zaku head. You can see out of... Well, actually no. Would it be? It's almost like this is... This cockpit's in the Zaku's head. Just from the way the monitors are set up. One thing I have to say about Operation Troy is really awesome being in the cockpit. Like, this definitely feels like the following in the footsteps of games like... Uh, oh, why is my mind blanking out now? I'm be reformatted. <laughs> Rise from the ashes. Uh, yes. It looks like it's following in the footsteps of Rise from the Ashes. It's really Come here! Oh, okay. He did not swing the heat hawk like he should have. Oh, dear. Um... Alright. What was the melee button? Oh, okay. So, the melee button's its own button you have to keep pressing. Now I need to get healed. God, I love this view. Talk to you is so awesome. Yeah. Oh, and the mobile suit can spring. Just enough. Just another aspect of, wow, why aren't more games different? For real. Come on. Oh, are you kidding me? That one between the leg? God dang it. The ragdoll thing's a little silly, though, as you can tell. <laughs> we like that slow fall. Like, <laughs> what? I you think shot this... him, and he just kind of slowly descended to the ground. I'm I think pretty sure that's is, not uh... how that works. Yeah, this is probably around the time when ragdolling was just starting to be used in games, and they kind oh, of oh no, ragdolling had been. Ragdoll had been around for a lot longer than this. Just the thing is, is, well, it's less ragdolling was a new thing and more how do you translate physics into a mech combat game? I know. Let's give the robots the same physics as people. That'll work. And right? then you get results like, yeah, and then you get really silly looking results like this. And it's like, <laughs> it, it definitely works, but um, it does look a little silly. Honestly, yeah. I'm trying to get used to the thrusters. I know some suits can just straight up fly around in this game. But this just seems to be like a very brief hovering for this Saku. Okay. And hopefully I can find an ammo and health station. Actually, there's one right now. That's good. What do you think of the actual cockpit itself? I know a lot of these monitors don't seem to actually be working, but still. It is still a very nice touch. Yeah. I, it gives a sense of realism that you normally would get from a game like this. Honestly, yeah. And it's that kind of realism that, you know, we're missing. From a lot of games. 
Oh, speak of the devil. Nice to see a Magella gets blown up in two hits. Yeah. The cracker is definitely good. Wow. Hmm. It seems to function like a normal grenade, though. Which, I mean, maybe it's just like I can't see it up close, but usually what sets the cracker apart is the enemy that when you throw it, it break apart five parts and then it's like a cluster thing. I was about to say, yeah, it's made it so effective. Cluster, ain't it? How's that? Firing the equivalent of shells in. Yeah, wow. And for those guys, you were just hitting them with artillery fire. Poor Zaku ain't gonna make it if I don't heal. Those infantry uh, definitely jacked it up. If you ever did want to see some of uh, what anti infantry or anti MS infantry combat looks like, one of the Gundam Iglu. Uh, episodes actually showed it off really well of Federation forces trying to ambush like one or two Zaku's and just how intense that is. And yeah, it's it's really dangerous. Yeah. And I remember that specific scene. There were four teams, I believe, three or four, that tried to take down the mobile suit, and only one managed to succeed. Like Pretty much. And actually, you do get a taste of it in, uh, what was it? 8th MS team as well. Mm -hmm. When they're battling the Zaku village. Yeah. It's weird to have to be piloting this as my first suit. I figured I'd choose this side because I thought I'd be playing as a, a gym before anything. Okay. Oh no, you first you got a steal mobile suit. I gotta take a page out of Xeon's book of stealing mobile suits, apparently. Well, Xeon had the suit to give them. It actually was the Federation that stole Xeon's suits to give themselves an advantage up until they started developing oh. Yeah. I'm trying to remember, the origin actually said. What was it? They, well, no, actually they had the doctor. Uh, what's his name? Something. Minovsky? He actually. Anton Minovsky. Yeah, didn't he actually defect and help them? No, wait, he was yes, killed. He defected. Well, no, he defected to the Earth Federation, helped them develop the Minovsky technology for you. Mobile suit. However, before, like, as he was being transported to Granada, he was pursued by Xeon, and they ended up getting killed by, uh, during the engagement. However, he had already passed on his information to Tem Ray and the development team, utilized the new combat data to formulate the D project, especially after the failure of the Federation military and loss of the early quick gun cannon. Yep. That's right. I'm gonna see if I can... Ah, oh, crap, it's gonna make me keep playing on normal mode. Alright, well, I guess I'm just gonna stick through it. Alright, mission three. On to the third. Let's see if I can start off in the gym this time. Oh! Speak of the devil. Oh, hey. Oh, it's is a ground. ground type? It is a ground type. Yay. Okay, I'm I down. I figured as much given the uh, rocket physics. Yeah. I'm pretty cool with this. Oh, look at the rage yeah. yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And we got buddies. 
Okay. Let's go, dingoes. <laughs> it sure does not. A, a man can dream. <laughs> I wonder if I can actually bring my shield up and defend with it. Why? Yeah. First ammo and health station when I can. Okay, I wanna. Oh, would you look at that? He's also got the right machine gun. Or, er, well, we see the cold district's machine gun with this. Ah, that's very interesting. I wonder if it has the grenade launcher. Ah, uh, it doesn't appear so. It's only giving me these choices. The early one. Yeah. Still. Ryan said it's using the type B machine gun. I thought that wasn't developed so much later. I would have expected the full pup machine gun, if anything. Yeah. Or the 100mm, maybe. Oh, wait. I can defend. Okay. There we go. I'll have to pull that up here in a bit. Here's how good this machine gun is. That place seems a fire cap. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay, it's hurting the other Zaku's a lot better. Oh crap. Okay. For some reason it wasn't crouching down. Wait, can these mobile suits crouch? I could have swore I did it earlier. I thought they did. Yeah. Crap. Ah, oh, friendly fire! Blue on blue. For real. Man, I'm losing my, my team. They're all dropping pretty fast. That's just the life of gym pilots. Always the hard to think. I'm so sorry, Red Shirt. It's okay. I'm used to this, this kind of death. That's just very sad. Okay. Alright, I feel like I'm getting the hang of this. I just wish I could pilot a, a ground Gundam or something. You'll probably be able to get to that later. From what I read, I don't think so, actually. Yeah. I think this is actually the best I'm gonna supposedly able to get. Why isn't it refilling in me? In single player or just in the whole game? No, just in single player, because it does have a, a snipers, the gym sniper customs. It's got the gun tank, gun cannons. It's got a lot of suits actually. Hmm. Wow! Oh, he's using the beam spray gun. Look at that. Oh, now he's at- wait, what? Oh. Why don't I have both what? of those? Wait, why does he have the beam Okay, the, chron the chronological time frame of this game confuses me. He says, you start out with no mobile suits, which implies that that's early in the one-year war, and you move to the GM ground type, which that implies, okay, now we're definitely towards the pre-Odessa era. But the... Type D's machine gun wasn't invented yet. So that's a little odd. As far as I know, it wasn't invented yet. And and then now he's in the beam spray gun, but the beam spray gun 
wasn't developed until the mainline model gyms were created, because the generator output could support beam weaponry. This game isn't following canon. <laughs> it's a little inconsistency is like that that just kind of makes me confused. Yeah. Oh, okay, I... Doms, really. And they definitely move like doms. Oh my god, they're actually hurting me really badly. Oh dear. And now there's doms, so this is definitely the pre-Odessa era. Because that's when the dom was more or less prevalent. Okay, yeah, I need to be in cover when those guys come out. I think I better hide next to the, uh, the repair one. How many of them are there? Wow. Great, they're good shots too, apparently. Oh dear. Okay, maybe I'm gonna have to depend on a machine gun. That barely is even hurting them. Oh, the Dawn is very heavily armored. That's for sure. Need something strong to punch through it. There we go. Yeah, there's one. Doesn't help that between these weird sluggish controls and the rocket velocity, I can't judge the right distance very well. Hmm. Stay down. You just gotta bum rush them. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start the repair process again. So I'm pretty sure I have no other teammates left. My fellow gyms have left me. You are but alone. The last survivor. That means I'm an ace, right? About the same kind of ace as, uh, Gary Sanders, or, uh, the main protagonist from Gundam 081. Fair enough. <laughs> you mean hamburger meat? What? No. Unless he can size the same feet. <laughs> I said the main protagonist of Gundam 81, not 0080. Oh my goodness, okay, I... Forgive me. <laughs> yeah, you see Battle Rector. Because apparently that guy had a reputation of losing all of his teammates too. So did... Uh, what's his face from 8th MS team? Sanders? Yep. Gary Sanders Jr. He didn't deserve to be disrespected. He was a good man. He tried. Okay. I'll try third person again. So far I'm definitely enjoying the first person combat. The only thing that sucks is that, yeah, it just kind of feels like almost source engine-y type aiming. It feels like if... It's weird because when I see a big cone like this, I don't feel like I'm going to be hitting the right enemy or right target. I need to be tap barring. I need a more precise reticle and it's throwing me off. So definitely that kind of early shooter, oh, just aim within the cone of fire and pray that your bullet lands in there. Yeah. Great, I'm getting mm. up for a firefight. Oh, okay. Go down! Oh, 
I love that they're giving me such detailed instructions, but I don't know what they are. I feel like they should be doing like a, I don't know, over the radio type stuff, or maybe having a little pop up in the left corner of the screen, like someone's popping up. That sounds like that would be appropriate, like this radio chatter, or yeah, just having kind of like a little overlay of like a bid screen. Yeah, because especially I just... when you're in the mobile suit. Exactly. And I just realized that, yeah, we haven't even heard a single voice line so far, have we? No, no, I really haven't. Though, to be fair, I can't really hear much of the game audio myself. I'd have to pull up the stream to actually hear it. Ah, uh, true enough. Crap, is there a... There are uh, refill crates nearby. Only got a couple bullets. Okay, guess we're going pistols, but the pistol so far is really, really bad. Oh, there it is. A refill crate? Yeah. Oh, I should have known that happened. <laughs> oh, it was a trap. Yeah, I think I was sniped. I saw tracer rounds, like the trail of the bullet, at least. I wish Battle Operations also did maps like this, like, you know, big mines and stuff, because even the first one had some cool looking maps that we still haven't seen in the sequel. Yeah, like, there's, there's definitely plenty of map variety they could go for. Yeah. Like, uh, what would be the next location you specifically would want to see, or... Whether it's an actual, okay, this happened from this series, or I just think this is a good-looking spot to do it at. Well, if we're talking about ground combat, maybe something akin to Operation Odessa with an attacking uh, mining facility would look really nice. Yeah. Something with a little bit of verticality to it, with, like large machines or whatever this means that there's cover and it's like going descending into one of those giant mining pits. I think that'd be interesting because we don't really have anything like that. And for space, there's fighting outside of a colony, like the entrance to a colony, so you can go in and out of like the docking bay. You have like maybe shuttles and stuff that are kind of floating around. You can hide behind. There's the gravity ring that's kind of moving around. Yeah. There's I also locales, there's locales like maybe the surface of Solomon, or heck, even the surface of Luna 2, like flying above Luna 2 and going along there. Actually, it would be cool to have one set on like, the yeah, the surface of a moon or an asteroid. And you simultaneously can land and then continue just flying around and fighting in space. Yeah. Kind of combine the two, you know. Alright, say so what they're gonna be doing for the future. Yeah. Just hopefully we see some more cool stuff. A bit more innovation, because it's actually been a while since we've seen the new map, haven't we? Oh, right, right, military base is the last map that we've seen on there. Which honestly, it's a pretty nice map in itself. Yeah. Just the game's too busy giving us city ruins and impact site. I still like how they got port base all hyped up because it didn't happen and they just never see it again. My alternate account on that game has only played that map four times. It's 
compared to the 83 times that it is played on City Ruins. And then, eh, what was it? I think like 65 on Impact Site. Yeah. But there's no bias, right? No, of course not. Even Mountain. I think I've only seen Mountain five times according to my play total on the alternate account. I know that the difference in numbers on my main account would be even more drastic, too. Gosh, they really need to, you know, kind of even the stuff out. I don't exactly feel like it's random anymore. It really doesn't feel like it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was expecting it to end right there. Well, alright. That was surprisingly fast. Yeah. I'm noticing that the typical ending point for every mission is around the 15 minute mark, it looks like. Hmm. Oh, what? Is this an Arctic base map? Arctic base? Yeah, no, so he's in cam uh, urban camo. Yeah, I see that. Huh. I hope I get to pilot another gym. I don't want to be stuck on the infantry combat too much. I'm also surprised uh, Battle Operation hasn't tried a, uh, what do you call it, capture the flag mode or anything else. Oh, sweet! I do get a sniper. Oh, hey. Is that a full semi-auto? Um, it feels like it's semi-auto. Okay. I really cannot tell where this is said at. This looks like a dock, maybe? Maybe it's supposed to be representing Belfast? Maybe. I do like the scale of all this. You have to consider that they had to make all these maps fit multiple roles of combat. Yeah. Which, that is a really awesome touch. Yeah. You gotta have coverage that would fit mobile suits, but also coverage that would fit infantry simultaneously. The only problem with that, I think, is... This game was 6v6 battles, if I remember right. So, I mean, when you look at the scale of this place right now, yeah, that's a little strange. This needs to be like a, you know, 32 players at least. 64 is kind of like the standard on a lot of these big Battlefield games. And I'm assuming Battlefield 6 is going to bump that standard up to 100. Yeah, I've been hearing that a lot, 120 multiplayer, which I'm like, wow, that's that's awfully ambitious. Let's hope they can actually try and pull that off. It's kind of They'll weird. have really bad flashbacks to the last time that someone tried to make a game at that scale. You didn't love Mag? <laughs> I didn't like the long loading times. Yeah. I only ever got to see one of my friends briefly play that game, and that was it. And he just kind of was sniping on top of a building, look, looking on a roadway, and only saw him fight like two or three people, and that was it. That's kind of the mag experience, sadly. A lot of it is just kind of finding your, your camping spot and just picking off targets. A lot smarter than dying and having to respawn one of the few respawns to get the guy. Yeah. Unfortunately, you just... You won't get to experience it or find out. It's one of those long gone... Or 
dead and gone games now. It is lost in the area. Yep. It's joined uh, a deep grave with it and this SOCOM confrontation. I feel like there's something else I'm forgetting. I have no idea where any of the enemies are. Because my radar isn't long enough to pick them up, and they're apparently able to hit me at this range with ease. But you may not be able to see them, but they can still see you. No kidding. Wow, that's a lot of infantry. Okay, let's proceed forward. Oh my gosh! Can you tell where this is at now? Oh! Oh, oh this is Jafura! That's actually pretty cool. Like, yeah, like now it's getting hooked with like the see the inside or inside Jafura. Now the scale of it makes sense. Wait, why haven't we had a battle operation map set in here, then? You know, that's another good point. Why isn't there a Jaburo map? That would be right for amphibious combat. Like, you could argue the jungle map is supposed to be Jaburo, which even I can be convinced that's the outside of Jaburo along the Amazon River. But even so, we could have a map set inside Jaburo and fighting along the inside of the base. And yeah. just have it set to, like, there's a section that's completely flooded in where you can have amphibious suits battle. There's plenty of spots where you can make for it, so. Huh. That definitely needs to be a suggestion or, like, coming soon on there. This is cool getting to see it from this perspective, though. I definitely appreciate this... this scale, and it's actually pretty appropriate for it, in truth. The buildings and everything. Yeah, because Jaburo was a very big face. Oh, okay, okay. Where did that thing go? Ah, oh, great. And there's a Zaku. That can apparently see me from over here. So many of these MS crate. Oh wait, Jim. Is there a gym for me to get in? I mean, if this is Jabura, that would make sense that there's a gym. Yeah. Why are you running at me? So I've ignored the infantry right beside you. Now giants have pieced together that this might be taking place during the events of major, like, oh yeah, geez, of major Gundam battles. So, if that last one was taking place during the Odessa campaign, this is during the season of Kaburo. Yeah. Which, huh. I wonder if Operation Troy, like, follows along the uh, North American campaign or the European campaign because I'm pretty sure this is all Earth-based combat. Uh oh. Ah, oh, crap. It's got Halo controls. Oh, jeez. And it 
Halo but bad controls. Just like a recorder car. <laughs> Turn on the Warthog run. <laughs> I smell road kill. Whoops. Don't mind me. I still am not entirely sure which button is getting me out of the the vehicles. I know it's something on the D-pad, that's all I can tell. Oh, it's down button, the Any button, one of them. It's this push a button. One of them works. One of them has to work. Yes. Oh, I get the beam spray gun now. And head Vulcans. How many of the other Gundam games have had Jaburo? Uh, it's been a staple of quite a few Gundam games, especially those that follow the main events of the One Year War. So, let's see, off the top of my head, besides the titular uh, Gundam Journey to Jaburo, there's the original Federation vs. Zeon game, Gundam vs. Data Gundam, there's the Dynasty Warrior uh, Gundam games that do that too. So there's like all of those. All right. oh and most other games that fall along have that too. This is the weirdest sounding beam gun I've ever heard. It sounds like a stock effect or something. Okay then. Oh crap. That's not the usual like you kind of noise that you hear from it. No, that's really not. Crap, what's following me? Oh god! Oh god, multiple groups! Get away from oh, me! Oh no. There's a Nozaku's, my boy. Nozaku's. That's for sure. My spray gun. I can't tell if this game is doing the thing where if I uh, reload a mag early, it just takes away the bullets from the rest of the mag. You know how some games do that? Yeah. <sighs> I do wish uh, Battle Operation also had a sprint button. Granted, this sprint ain't really lasting very long. Just something this sprint will make me just a little faster. Especially yeah. on a map of this scale. When you see Red Shirt running towards you. I'm going to beat you to death. Fear him. Oh wait, are headshots actually doing more damage? Hmm. I mean, I make them. I mean, I want to say it does, but at the same time, if the only thing blowing off a mobile suit's head would do is just make the pilot blind. Do they even have backup cameras in some mobile suits? Oh yeah, many mobile suits did. The, uh, like for example, in HMS team, when the is it easy? No, it was still the gun and ground type. It had its main uh, camera disabled because it got hit in the head. It still had backup cameras to see with. Most of those suits have cameras mounted on the eyes, the very top of the head, the back of the head, as well as a camera that was mounted right outside the cockpit. I gotcha. Oh god. Everyone's favorite quality pastors. Oh no. Am I about to Is it the Roly Poly Boys? Yep. Oh no, it's a good one. Not the act, guys. 
Hey, that's not an F, that's what we got. Yeah, we aren't seeing waddles yet. I wonder, can I... Oh, I can't fire them at the same time. This kind of sucks. I wanted to charge in with my Vulcans firing and my beam rifle firing. Alright. There's not a ammo point near me. It's oh no. Repair point. Uh, <laughs> so what's the general thoughts so far watching this? Well, I gotta say that it doesn't look bad. I mean, heck, even compared to Gundam Crossfire, this seems like quite an upgrade. Yeah. And come on, you're inside of a mobile suit. Look at this. Look at this cockpit view. Is this awesome? If I were to do an upgrade of the layout that I have, I'd probably base it off of this. For real, man. In fact, I'd probably ask you to take some screenshots of like the inside of a cockpit view so that way I can use that as references. There are practically no good high resolution features on this. There really aren't, and I'm wondering. This game probably doesn't have an option to remove HUD. Most shooters do, but this was so old, I don't think it's gonna have it. I wouldn't put faith in it. Not that I don't think you could have read the instructions to anyway. Right. Okay, so that was Jaburo. That was mission four out of five. We're definitely taking longer than I expected it to. Um, but we'll see. Oh, wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, hey, and you see ships in the background. You never see much Ooh. about naval warfare in Gundam, and that's probably for good reason. And the U.S. Federation Navy is very seldom and rapid. Yeah, and once you got the Ak guys and the Zagox, it's kind of understandable why. I was about to say, you know, it would be cool if a modern Gundam game did also have naval warfare. Like destroyers and cruisers and uh, gunboats kind of zipping along. Oh, this is California, Oh. Really, Gregory? Oh, let's see it. Oh, you're using the beam gun, but the DM can yeah. You're still on a standard gym, I think. Uh, or ground gym. No, you're in a... Gym. What? What? Ground type gym with the... What? What? <laughs> when could you equip those? That is not in your standard equipment layout. No, it is not. What? I am so... Okay. I'm confused now if this is actually a viable loadout or or if it's just like exaggerated for the team because as far as they know, they're not equipped to handle these weapons. It's kind of weird. Oh my god! Okay, okay, Jesus. Let me back off. You're throwing a lot of enemies at me all at once. And no repair stations either. Fantastic. Thank you. Come to think of it, a lot of the Gundam games did these mobile repair stations, because both uh, Crossfire did it and UC Battle Record also did it. 
And I'm assuming some of the PS2 games probably did it even. You hear the noises that thing was making? Again, I can't hear the game. Because I'm watching through the stream. Yeah. Well, Zagak is making very strange, like, pinging noises. Or dinging noises, it sounds like. Huh. I wonder if this was, like, an attempt to try and modernize the sound effects of the Um, hmm. I think the sound effects are fine the way they are, honestly. They're iconic. Yeah. Well, it's like, I remember Crossfire also did that, trying to update the sound, like the sounds of the machine guns and even the movement of some suits. So the walking sound for suits like the Jim, the Gundam, and the others were kept pretty much the same. Huh. Yeah, I don't think I even remember what they sounded like on Crossfire, now that I think about it. I think the only thing I remember is... Almost every Gundam game I play, I'm like, 100mm machine gun does not sound as beefy as I imagined it would. The only one I feel like got it right was, uh... The Side Stories game, but... The Side Stories game didn't exactly get much right to begin with. Yeah... Oh, this is going to be rough. Oh, Side Stories. Side Stories game is also another Japanese exclusive. Yeah, and it's another one we'll never see, but one day I'll show it on the channel. One day. So just kind of anticipate that. Yeah. Maybe I'll play through a couple of the campaigns on stream. Oh my god, this is really rough. Game, where are the repair stations? I need them really bad. Oh! Put these frag grenades. These Fetty grenades are something special, I guess. Man, this mission's gonna be a nightmare. They. Uh... I don't get why there's no repair kits, and the enemies are only focusing on me! You are the biggest threat. Apparently. Jesus game, what do you want from me? Really, they want you to die. I'd rather not, thank you. Really awkward just having to fight at these long ranges. I was hoping to be able to get in closer than this. Yeah, most goals we combat usually is a little more close. Right. Well, at least the Zaku 1's die in like two shots, but. Okay. And their well, Jim kind of lost his leg. Can't fight without leg. I mean, you can, but it's less than ideal. Wow, they've already 
really damage my health. So you can already tell where this is this battle was set at, right? Well yes, it's California based, which means this is the assault on the Neon main facilities in North America towards the late stages of the war. California base was the setting of a lot of major events during the late Wonder War period, including the game events of most of the Front. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's The Midnight Fan Rear team was tasked with escorting the forces that were retreating Earth uh, from the California base along the southern edge of the state. Meanwhile, this looks like it's taking place more towards the northern area. Okay. Uh... I might be out of luck on this mission, honestly. I. Oh, yeah, it even said in the corner of California base, too. Oh, uh, yeah. I was right that it is, looks like it's following more than North American campaign. I don't really show much of the other parts of the world, it seems like. Maybe I just need to play more aggressively in the mobile suit instead of trying to snipe. I don't know how reliable the shield is. Like, it's kind of bad when I really can't tell what's behind me or where I'm headed. Yeah, it's a little disorient. Yeah, with this much of my screen being blocked, it's just kind of guessing. Advancing carefully, raises up the shield, slams into a building. Whoops. Like, okay, outside of a little bit of, uh, of property damage, we're making our way just fine. You guys need to pick up the slack already, okay? Okay, maybe I should try to run up to him with this 90mm L. Because, yeah, definitely the closer I get, the more it chews through him. It makes sense for such a lower caliber. It has yeah. pretty good velocity, but not a lot of penetration power. Right. I also didn't ask, so you do like this gym cockpit, is this pretty faithful to the other iterations you've seen? See how there's a boost gauge and the map, I guess stabilizer, heat gauges. It is a lot more modernized, like it's, it looks like a, a combination of a like light cockpit that you would see for like a fighter jet but the gauges and instrumentation look like they're more in line with the, uh, with, with the cockpits that you see from the Wonder War Air suit. Like especially the center part, which is like where the radar is. That part is very close to what it was in Rise from the Ashes. Oh my god, there's the house station! And it's so far from the ammo station! Great! Uh, this mission's kind of brutal, man. <laughs> Gotta be honest. You're really uh, trying. Yeah. I guess I'd rather have the health station right here, though, next to me, then. Uh, 
Okay. Screw your goof. So far, those gawks are being the biggest pain to deal with. Honestly. The Zygots? Yeah, they, they take the biggest beating, it seems like. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Should I backtrack all the way over to that ammo station way out in the distance or keep pushing forward and hope there's a... God, I only have one mag. Ooh. You know what, I'm gonna backtrack. Yeah. Probably you're the best, because I don't think you have any backup like Nope. The beam rifle is completely dry and there's only one mag in here. And these frag grenades do not have good range I, that I cannot judge very well. Okay. And... Oh my god! Thing's sniping me. All the way over there. Oh, Wait, did I really lose all the gems? Did, did they all die again? I think they all died again. All like five of them. Oh. I'm losing guys. I know it could be nasty for these bad people, but it doesn't be. It's blowing up all really nearly I think. They're letting me down. Oh great. Just slowly hooking around the entire harbor. I don't even know if I have the range to hit him that far. Oh wait, there is one, one gem. Uh, Nathaniel Edgar is still alive. Only for two more minutes. One. Oh, come on, Nate, you can do it. Uh, he's kind of surrounded. Try to survive. Oh dear, come on, you can survive, hopefully. I wish he would, but I don't know. It's looking very good. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Get away from me, get away from me. Heat frags. Oh my god, why did it go so high? It bounced off the bridge. Okay, that, that's better. That one definitely hit. Looks like frags are generally one hit kill. Man, if only they had that much firepower in that battle armor. A practically ruthless battle operation. The only time you use a frag is if you, everything else is recharging, or if you can throw it over cover and know the arc will be able to hit someone on the other side of the wall or something. Other than that, you honestly have no reason to really ever bring out those things. Yeah, they're not very useful. Oh crap. Yep, the goof beat the other gym. Oh dear. I haven't had much reason to... Well, I guess I haven't wanted to try using much of the melee combat. Okay, the music ramped up super intense. I'm wondering if I'm about to see something like a Gelgoog. Wait, why is there boss music? I don't like this. Get away from me, get away from me. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Oh god, that... Uh, that ain't no normal Zaku. Here. Crap, and there's the repair station. 
Okay, this just went like 0 to 100 really fast. <laughs> These freaking frames! Get him! There we go. Okay, I'm gonna run back for ammunition real fast, and then I'm gonna try to make a sprint for that uh, repair station. Notice how everything renders so slow. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Guess the AI finished Hello. up the last guy. Hello and welcome. Hello. Welcome to the stream. Yeah. <laughs> right as the last Federation mission is beat, and... Well, we definitely will not get through all the Xeon campaign. I'll probably at least start, like, the first mission or two. Probably just the first one, since they're taking, on average, 10 to 15 minutes. Yeah, this, like, that was actually rather quick, I gotta say. Like, it yeah. literally just ends at California base, which I'm surprised, like, I know that was, like, one of the last major offensives of the one year war, but... I would have expected just a little bit more, maybe covering the North American mop-up campaign or even the push into Europe, but, huh. Okay. Yeah. It would have helped if we could at least read what's being said between missions. Also, yeah, look at that. There's the ground gun with the 180. Man, I wish huh. we could play that. I know. I can't skip the credits, are you kidding me? <laughs> it might be faster to just restart the game, honestly. <laughs> oh, wait, is oh, that... Oh, wow. Is this... No, that... should, should I just reboot? Why oh. is there not a great... Oh, wait, maybe this is the end? <laughs> this is probably the end, actually, yeah. Man, I wish I could have piloted that ground gun. That, that, that looks so cool. It does look cool. For boost by... Okay, you don't... I'm assuming that we probably ought to wrap up for this, unfortunately. Uh, sorry, if, sorry if everyone's just now joining. It's a bummer. I'll probably be posting this whole entire raw VOD on uh, YouTube, though, or at least just the Federation half of it. Edit it down just slightly, and maybe try to subtitle some of that stuff if I can. Sorry you came in late, Mark. Well, at least you're able to see some of it. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know, you want to continue the rest of this sometime? Or should I just do it in my own time? Uh, might be interesting to try and do it again some other time. Okay. And Figure since out when's the best time to do it. Yeah. We have taken about 15 minutes, although that last one was 12, so I'd assume 15, 30, 45. Bound over. Hour and a half. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, well, that that's Dutch. That's how we uh, communicate once we're actually in-game. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. Well... Any quick thoughts or feelings that you want to wrap up on with this? Getting a good look at the game, I definitely have to say that it looks visually impressive for the time. And overall, I know Sheen that we never really got to see this out like outside of Japan. The fact that it even has an English title, like Gundam Operation Troy is the Japanese title, it was supposed to be released in the United States as Mobile Op the One Year War. Yeah. Kind of like trying to brand it to sound more appealing. But yeah, it just kind of never went through. Probably because of Crossfire's failure, but... Hmm. 
but it probably was also doubled by the four sales in Japan. Again, it was an Xbox 360 exclusive. That doesn't make sense for Japan. But, yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, unfortunately. They got a lot of good titles right after Crossfire, and we never saw them, unfortunately. And I hate to say it, but they just pretty much shot themselves in the foot with that, I think. Yeah, they did. At least they're, I guess, trying to correct that now, but the problem is I wish they would take more of a chance on making s new stuff right now. They seem to be playing it safe and very slowly putting out games. Yeah. And it's more or less it's stuff that... Slow. Yeah, it's more or less stuff that, you know, they've already kind of done. They don't want to do something big or risk taking like this, it feels like. Mm -hmm. But, all in all, yeah, I enjoy what I'm playing. It's definitely a product of the period. Yes, it's aged okay. I mean, there's definitely some elements that over here, like the ragdolling is a little, a little immersion breaking. But, that being it's a little. So that being said, it's still, the graphics wise it looks pretty nice, the mobile suits are impressive, the cockpit looks beautiful, like the cockpit view looks really great. Yeah. So, yeah, like some, like some elements would definitely be fleshed out if ever they would make another game like this, which for the love of of all this holy please, Bandai Namco, just give us something like this again. We're begging you. The technology is there. It wouldn't be hard with this kind of assets and stuff that are made today. It's very much possible. They could do a, a 32v32 type match, and not every single player has to be in the mobile suit. I mean, Try to make it varied, have multiple fronts, maybe like five players are piloting mobile suits and fighting in the background while you have infantry attacking flags or bases that, you know, the mobile suits can't get into. The infantry's got to deal with that out there. And then they got to try to quickly transport flags or whatever. You know, just something that it would give... Technically gives... make it... Hmm. Well, make it sort of like rush mode from Battlefield where you have to arm objectives but the objectives are inside of faces that you can only get through infantry. So you'd use the mobile suits to rush these facilities and give them cover, and then the infantry would go in. You would essentially treat the mobile suits like giant, like giant mechanized machines of just like tanks would. Yeah. And uh, speaking of the tanks, I mean, try to make those maybe like the infantry rush segments like those are the quote-unquote mobile armors you have to deal with. The bigger units. Essentially like yeah. how it is in Battlefield, you know. Uh, yeah, exactly. And not to say that they shouldn't do like an all mobile suit mode, you know. Try 12v12 all mobile suits only on big maps or maybe I, I don't know, would you think 24 is pushing it or 16v16? Because six v six is might work. Cause yeah, I was like, you got to remember. Think of a game like Titanfall, which has six v six combat and the kind of scale that it's represented. Like that's literally the template you want to go for for a modern Western mech combat style game. Most games don't usually go beyond that. Yeah, and then even just playing battle operations, six v six is very hectic. You're right so about even that. if you are going to have some infantry for that, you're probably going to be going at most 16 players, with 6 being the last maximum number of mobile students on the field. But even that, that's pretty much pushing it. I'd probably say it'd be more like 12 versus 12. Honestly, you're probably right about that. Also, have a good day, Mark. Thanks for swinging by, dude. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. But, uh, God, before I forget... You are right about that, because... I mean, part of the thing about Titanfall is you have to keep in mind is the scale of an actual Titan compared to a pilot. And versus mm -hmm. what these mobile suits are. So, 
I do think that, yeah, 12v12 12 ain't a bad idea. You would have to... I think they have the right idea with the scale of some of these maps on here. Just maybe include more cover or something, though. And not to mention there is... Yeah, definitely more, more cover. Yeah. Not to mention we aren't even seeing all the mobile suits. We aren't seeing the goof, the Gelgu, the, uh, the artillery units. We aren't seeing all of that. Yeah. If they did do a current day one year war first person shooter Gundam game, they would have, well, as we've seen from Battle Operation, a lot to work with, but you'd want to keep it reasonable. Don't make it like all, you know, the most powerful units on each side. No, try to keep it grunts and maybe go up to as high as the RX 78 or a full armor Gundam versus, uh, like what, a Gelgu Jaeger? Or actually, no, isn't the Jaeger from 0080? I believe so, but it, it's along that line. You'd want to keep it something like balance. Yeah. Potentially. You don't want to go too hard with it, or else then, yeah, it's a little bit much. Pretty much. And I mean, even the mobile suits maybe could fall into their own classes, kind of like Battlefield does of Assault, Engineer, uh, Sniper, and. Uh, well, I mean, Engineer, I guess that's not exactly the right thing. But you know what I mean. Compare it to Battlefield's classes. Or even Battlefront's classes, really. I mean, Engineer could still work, because you'd have someone who would have like a repair tool to fix mobile suits up, or even tanks on the battlefield. Right. They'd probably also be Engineer for anti-mobile suit warfare. I also feel like the tanks would... So it would probably be simplified. It would probably be simplified too, not so much classes, but more like weapons loadouts. So you'd have something geared more towards infantry combat, something geared more towards mobile suit combat, or, and then maybe something in between. Yeah. Actually, speaking of... Well, do you think the tanks could be balanced to where it's like, okay, they won't just instantly get, be guaranteed to lose every mobile suit fight. They at least do stand somewhat of a chance. Because, I mean, in battle operation, yeah, oh, yeah, you get into a tank, you are you may as well be asking for death. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that they'd be able to balance it out and make them actually viable instead of, you know, just cannon fodder. Yeah. You'd have to make them at least be able to, you know, seriously maybe to kind of inflict a stagger or something, which even the stagger system is kind of its own can of worms. Would you really want that in a first-person shooter? Yeah. But, a lot of speculation. Yeah, before we just go rambling off way too much on this subject. That's just basically the thoughts here. It's a shame that we never got this, but... Man, if I played this back in 06, I would have been head over heels and glued to it. I know that. Yeah. But... Ain't nothing we could do about it now other than look back and maybe learn from it in the future, so... Uh, we'll try to probably do the rest of this campaign. Hopefully it should only take an hour, hour and a half at most. We'll, we'll see. We'll just have to organize for it now, but I'll try and get this Federation half and just this little wrap-up here posted on YouTube. So, thanks for joining Red Shirt. I really appreciate it, and everyone who watched. And yeah, hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and take care out there. Tell everyone bye, Red Shirt. See ya. It's been really great, and I'll see you all some other time. Hopefully on another Gundam-related stream, because I love joining in. There's going to be plenty more of those coming, and uh, I, I might want you around for uh, even a few things beyond Gundam. I'll hint towards that, too. Yay! Alrighty, everyone. Take care and have a wonderful night.